Last weekend on the way up to Disney, we stopped in at our boys at EIC Motorsports to check out the LS7 and see what actually went down. No outro on this video, no in between, just the meat and potatoes of what's going on with the LS7. Let's jump into it. You're fired. <laughs> this is my ugly motor right here? Yes. See, what I wanted to show you was, see the main bearing here. Trashed. Well, oh yeah, you mean. Oh shit, this is the other one. Um, there, um, there. So you can see it. And then the front one. Does not work up the answer. Hey, we got it all. This is my motor, and these are, yeah, I'm getting oil in my hands, but these are the ones that my car broke. Yeah, see, this one's broken in the middle. See it broken there? It's broken right there in the center. How is that? I'm assuming it was the last shop, to be honest, because it's not very common for these to fail like that. This one's also cracked. I mean, they might have still worked to a certain extent because the car didn't tap or anything, but... This one's also cracked. I, man, I don't know. I really don't know. I, my, my, I mean, I don't know. I'll ask him about this. I really don't know much about all this stuff, so. Oh, yeah, that was one of the biggest. Um... Yeah, look at that. See where the, the but, cup is. And you don't think that's because they might have, I mean, I hate, I hate, I always forget the name when I go to say it. When you go to put the rockers on, you have to basically, the preload. Pre you don't think it's because they just wanted that with a gun, pop, 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 and didn't check top dead center no, or anything? because, see, the preload is a, is just set by this. Like, you can't bottom this out. Like okay. You're going, even if they do it, you're not, you're not, this doesn't have adjustment. Okay. This is just straight on, on top, and that's it. And so, you saw that, we, I, so these are some of my factory LS7 rockers. These have the Trunion upgrades in it, and then yeah, there's, there's another set that, that don't. Not. That's why I put on the list. We need about, I think, three or four that I can do the upgrade for. Okay. Um, we're going to put a Johnson or something lifter on this. This is this is just valve float and lack of control. Um, and then a couple of the valves were mushed. Um, and you said it had Chinese valves on the exhaust yes, side? Yes, it does. It's got, see this, this XVT number. Uh -huh. This is a West Coast cylinder head. And I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not something we want to, yeah, yeah, you know no, what no. I mean? Yeah. But, he uses Chinese parts and they've been like one of my guys that says, I've been telling him to get rid of that. This has my valves, dude. You I got a little motor, but big valves. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You're, um, but uh, I think we needed one or two valves, Joe, for that. Yeah, I think you put it on the list. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of these are mushed. Well, know? that's because they didn't put the lash caps on and we ran the car without lash yeah, caps. Well, there you go. That's and cool. then they put lash caps when we went back and I figured it out. We put lash caps on all valves and it's not supposed to. It's, it's not, only titanium. Only yeah. Well, you can put them on a stainless, but, you know, to get your geometry right, but it's not something that's needed. As you can see, look at the difference in the tips, tip lengths, right? Yeah. So then what happens is, now, that's one thing, Joe, that you mentioned that may make sense. Because this one has a longer tip length. Yeah. And if they put a, valve, a lash cap on this, now when the preload is set on this one, yeah. it's all the way bottomed out. That's what I'm assuming, so and that's what I'm assuming. That's why we're finding some of these broken. Hard to say at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard yeah. to say at this point. Pistons we're replacing, but I mean, everything looked okay. I mean, is that normal? I don't, I don't know. Normal skirt wear. I mean, it's it's okay. Um, you know, you did have some. You did have some main bearings that were kind of shot. Yeah, that you one was bad. And what typically what you see, when you see a main bearing that's on the side. Sometimes that tells you that the crank is a little, it's flexing. It's natural, you know, that's the way it naturally moves or whatever. Okay. Um, and the heads looked fine? 
No, heads you haven't look, really expected them yet look, like that. Heads look okay to the point where they just need a valve job, and pretty much that was it, in my opinion. Do, do they? Because uh, the, when I bought it, they told me that they were state, they were ported from West yeah. Coast. Do they look like they're ported and yeah, stuff? Yeah, you could see the. Um, well, it's all dirty, but yeah. you could see the the CNC program. That's that's, that's how it's dirty it's got in, in one year that they've been back on the car. Well, that's all idling fuel. Okay. What when you when you idle these and and pump gas. Puts pistons like this and all that other shit. Well, yeah, I already bought the flex fuel sensor. I'm gonna order the injectors for it, so I'm gonna go up for the E85. Yep. Um, and so, you know, a lot of idling is what does that, along with the tuning that's a little on the rich side. Mm -hmm. Will will dirty the chambers and yep. all that shit. Like, yep. you'd be surprised when you race E85 or when you race. Those you things are gonna be clean. Idle, yeah, and race car stuff when you when you don't idle a lot, this yeah. shit comes out. Stuff comes out really nice, like clean, cleaner. Yeah, I uh, David tuned it very conservative because I told him, "Hey, I'm gonna track it. I don't maybe, want this thing maxed maybe out." He puts, maybe he put a little bit more idle fuel in it because that's that's fine. I mean, that's normal pump gas. That's what you see when yeah. you take a pump gas engine apart. When they're they they will be black. When you take a race motor apart, you'll be like, that chamber is way cleaner. Way and the cam cleaner. safe to go back in the car, or do you think I should get another cam? I thought that we had discussed possibly changing the cam. It was a little mild. I mean, that's up. Yeah, to no, me. no. We, I, I, so, yeah, we discussed. You said it was mild, and then I was like, ah, I don't want to spend the money. But now that I'm sitting on it, I'm like, man, it's such a baby. It, well, I mean, they're not very expensive. 500 bucks. 500 bucks for a cam from K-Tech. And I can I'll order it. You, a, no, I'll get you, you get me custom, one? I'll get you a custom one for, for what you're doing for the road race stuff. Okay. Okay. And then the pistons, were you able to kind of figure out that's what you're going to do ordered. with them? Yep. Took all the measurements. The first thing we did because we can't start the process until we get parts. So that's right. Why when you got, when I called you and gave you the list, the first thing I do is get measurements. We CC the chambers. Mm -hmm. um, we don't take none of that for granted. We CC the chambers, make sure the combustion chamber is the size that we want, and um, we measure what they call free drop, which is the distance between that valve closed and before it hits the deck is very important for a piston to valve clearance. Yeah. So we got all those measurements and send that off to Diamond, and Diamond's making us another piston. Okay. okay. So then you and you worry about the cam because I know like a lot of cams you have to worry about that piston to valve clearance again. So you'll worry about the cam. You ain't, you ain't Drivability up. still because I, I yeah. every now and then I do the Corvette Boomer and I go to a Cars and Coffee with it. So my wife never really gives me a lot of time to drive it. No, you're fine. But uh, you're fine. um, sick dude, sick. Um, what else do we need? Do we need anything else? I don't need. To, I, yeah, I got you the money for, for the, the parts. Part, yeah. For the most part that we've done, I mean, you know, we made yeah, because we're going with the Johnson odds and ends here okay. and there. But I, I, I try to make that list as comprehensive. That's why I don't, I don't say nothing until we get it. Yeah, apart, yeah. You know? The timing chain, obviously, I gave you, but the guides for the timing chain and all that, we go with the same, or we're putting new ones in. I didn't. That's something that I didn't even think about. Yeah, um, I know I got you the chain, but I didn't get anything else. If yeah. They sell if they sell like if you think that that's a failure point at this end. They, they don't say to it to be, but you know, I mean, if it's something you want to put a chain guide like a billet, I know they sell a billet one. Now. Uh huh. Okay. Plastic and billet, you know how they, you know how it is. One, one is definitely a lot stronger than the other, and these, and these things can get, they get hot and they get brittle sometimes. Yeah. You know so. And the rods, nothing. Everything looked fine on the rods. Visually, they all look good. You okay. Know? Maybe I've heard people know. like ma magna flux them or something. What is that? Like yeah, a test or something that you run on? They mag them probably to check for cracks. Um, okay. Not something that I would think that you would at, need. This, at this point would need. It's no. not a big expense either to do if you need to. But um, for the most part, I think it'll be good. Well, what's that? Are you using the chain now? Uh, what? To Crack check. Checking. Yeah, to check the, the. So these rods are titanium, but they have a coating on them. I mean, I don't know. Do the how do they test for the coating to be if it's weak or not? If it starts flaking off, I would think. I mean, I know Blackstone is not by when I told you, but that's one value that never has never increased in my couple of ch checks that I've done. Yeah, I, I, I don't think. And the rod bearings were fine. All of them looked good. Eh, I mean, we're gonna put. I mean, they're gonna put in. new ones in it, but they didn't look like they were about to spin or anything. No, no. Man, because I had, that oil pressure was just. Uh, when we build this thing, are we gonna have tolerance for that fifty weight, or we're we gonna go back down to like a forty weight on no, it? We'll probably put a little bit lighter over the yeah. yeah. We, I mean, when you have an internal pump, you know the internal pump kind of dictates what that is, and that's why like plus clearances and all yeah. the temperature and all that stuff. But an internal pump sometimes is a toss-up, like you know what I mean. So that that's why you go with a. 
when it's a pump inside outside the motor, like mm -hmm. we have there, like you yeah. have in one of those engines, it's easily adjustable. Like, yeah. okay, well, we got only 10 pounds at idle. Let's yeah. put it at 30. You can just easily change the speed. But once you put that thing in there and it's in there, you, yeah. get, you get what you get or else you're taking it back apart. Yeah. 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 No, and it's frustrating because I don't know if this Chevy has it, but I know my truck has it where it basically drop, it lowers oil pressure to conserve gas. It, it basically, my well, truck will go down to. Yours is an LT. I think. Yeah, it's an LT. LT yeah, I have the LT. Electric, yeah. Has an electric. So frustrating. That they drop, but like I it said. It scares the crap out of me. You'd be surprised. A race yeah. motor <coughs> will have eighty hundred thousand dollar race engines that an idle will have zero. It'll have, it'll just be in the warning sign and people will freak out. Yeah. You don't need any oil when there's no load. All you need is just oil there. Yeah. And we don't have to change the bore or the pistons or any, uh, sleeves or anything? No? No, for the, well, I'm going to hone it. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. going to hone it 5.0. Okay. So we're, so we're going to, we're definitely going to do that because we're going to start, stay with a straight cylinder wall and you're not so, so it's like perfect. Okay. You know, you know, the whole deal is not to patch it up. The whole deal is to have a new engine. If you start just trying to throw a, a piston at it, yeah, it'll be good, but it won't be a brand. No, 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 no. I figured, yeah, we would have to hone so it. That's fine. Based on what you told me, you want to start, you know, it's good to start fresh. You yeah. Have no issues. No, no, for sure. I don't. The best chance that this thing, you know, runs and drives the way it's supposed to. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I don't want to be dealing with, and the the valves, everything. I mean, the springs, every. Oh, it, it's running dual springs. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 all West Coast cylinder head stuff that comes from the you know with their with their head package. Probably. Okay. All right. Cool. That's good. We'll put these on for now. But these super ones, they leak all the time. Do they leak? They leak all the time. And it's, a, it's like a slow seep, but it's annoying as hell. Yeah, and that's not a good thing for a road race car. Yeah, you know, yeah, they road seep race all the time. Car, you need it to be sealed up. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I just changed my catch can. I, I've been running it with the exposed filter, and Mighty Mouse was like, "Hey, you got to take that off because it needs to recirculate in case it spills over." So I just ordered that and a couple other parts for the car. Mm -hmm. And then supposedly that windage tray I ordered for it and stuff is supposed to help with the scavenging of the oil. Well, what it does is just um, anytime the, the crank. Just figure something spinning, right? Yeah. Imagine you're spinning and I try to grab you. You're going to stop spinning. Yeah. So basically that's what you're doing with the wind tray is the crank mm -hmm. is turning. The oil from the pan is the pan is so close that the, the oil comes and splashes up against yeah, the Yeah, it's crank just splashing everywhere. Yeah. And then just holds you. Yeah. Holds the crank. So it takes a little power away. Not only that, it foams the oil. Yeah. So it does nasty things. The idea uh, in theory, now we're talking theory, is that you want to have that motor look like it's got no pan on. Like... If you had the room, yeah. that's why you see big pans on race engines. Mm -hmm. Because the crank wants to be like feel, feel that it, it's got no oil on it. Yeah. So then we remove the windows tray completely and it's just wide open. But you've got a big refrigerator looking. Yeah, yeah, you got one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonka so truck. Then that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the ideal situation. When yeah. you've got something that's close, you know, that's the only way you can do it. Yeah, no, I mean, so, but yeah, it said like gains 10 horse. I didn't buy it for that. I, got, I bought it for anything that's going to help oiling on the track. Like, so I bought that. I bought there. There's a company that sells one for the dry sump, which I find weird that it would need it. But I bought a baffle for the dry sump now inside, which yeah. I got to take out before I put the well, motor back in. When you made a good point on a dry sump engine, there's only, a, it doesn't have all the oil in the pan. Yeah. So most of the oil is in the tank. Yeah. So. You only got maybe a quarter or two running through the engine. Mm -hmm. That's great for wind. Windage is the issue. That's great because there's not a, oil, a lot of oil splashing around. So yeah. that, that's good. That's yeah, good. I got to take it out before because they, they say after every rebuild or during a rebuild, you should take it out, clean it out you so you don't pass in that oil. Yeah, clean the pump. Sometimes the, the pump gets, you know, rebuilt, but we're putting a brand new pump, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but, that um, pump was expensive. Yeah, yeah. But that's a good thing. It's a safety thing for yeah. you, you know. All right. I mean, awesome, dude. Do you, uh, did they give you a timeline for the pistons? I'm not rushing you. Again, four, I know you don't like me to tell you that, but I'm not rushing you. Four, four, usually four or five weeks is what it takes. Okay. So we're thinking closer to the new year for the motor to be done. Yeah. And you got to figure with the holidays. It's so yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm not rushing you. We're looking at probably end of December, January. Yeah. I'm not rushing you. You take your time. I got plenty of little things. My wiring harness is starting to get brittle. So I bought some like heat uh, protecting tape. I got to do the dry sump. I bought uh, not solid motor mounts, but a stronger motor mount. There's plenty of stuff to do to the body of the car that I'm going to take advantage of while it's down. That's fine. You can work on Nick's. Oh, yeah. No, Nick wants me to do a whole gasket set on his car. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Better you than me. Yeah, for sure. I'll keep it busy until Yeah. I'm just happy that it's not, I'm just happy that it's not major. Like, it's not like. It wasn't going to be major. 
I mean, it was still running and driving, and this thing was broken. What surprised me is the lifters are cracked. I've never had lifter tap. No lifter tap. Yeah, obviously I had lower oil pressure and questionable uh, oil consumption, but the car still ran like a bat out of hell. Essentially what you had is just an engine that had a little bit more, more wear, but it was not broken. It wasn't really broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, those cracks in those lifters, what eventually was going to do is spread through the motor, yeah. Right. It, now, when it starts to tear, you know, break all those particles and put them in, then yeah. And yeah. you've got some main bearings that are starting to go, you yeah. know what I mean? Six but I think I, I caught gear, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you had an oil pressure loss all of a sudden. The problem is, once it starts wiping that bearing, it doesn't stop. Yeah. You ain't fixing it with better oil. You ain't putting slick 50 in it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you yeah. ain't doing none of that shit. Yeah. You're. you're that's what you got. Yeah, I have a bunch of Corvette guys that got mad at me that I went 50 weight, but I was just trying to keep it alive, like just to try to bandage it a little bit. Yeah, I mean. But Chevy specifically says when you're on road course, go up to a 50 weight. So I don't know. They, those well, are a couple it's guys. because of oil temp. Because yeah. you're in road race, you're in and out of the throttle. Yeah. You're wide open. So oil temps go through the, yeah. the moon. Okay. Yeah. So then a multi viscosity, which is starting at 1030. Yeah. I mean, that shit's light. That's a 10. It's going to be a. It's going to be water. Oil it? Yeah. It's going to be water by the time you're done with it. Yeah. So then that's what they're doing is they're compensating for, for lack of. And the oil pressure will go down with oil temp. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And all that stuff. So what, what's your favorite oil to run? What would you. What are you running these guys? I mean, you can't tell me. It depends, <laughs> it depends on what, what it is. It really depends on the application. Okay. Road race stuff. I heard that mobile one is really good. For That's what stuff. I've been running last. That's I mean, the last stuff I was running. A lot of people run that stuff. If you yeah. want to get exotic with oils, we got some exotic stuff. But I mean, it's not. It's not. My thing was, man, I was buying when I first got the car. I was running Motul, but I was spending two, yeah. three, close to three hundred dollars in oil change on this little car. We, we run. A, yeah. We run a, a, an oil on the drag race stuff called LAT, even on the road race stuff, and it's a very specific oil that's made. For racing, yeah. it's not an oil for anything. It makes power, which is yeah. very rare. There's oils that are for, like Royal Purple is a good oil, or um, AMS oil. AMS oil is a yeah. great oil for protection. Yeah. But you put them up against the dyno, you put a motor with AMS oil, you put some with LAT, you'll see it. It's not big, but it'll be 10, 15 horse on a, on a seven, 800 horse motor. Do you think the way it was running with the lifters like that, it was down on power? Or was it running full strength probably? Hard to say. Yeah, some guy was like, oh, you're probably running 400. I'm like, man, if I was running only 400, this thing is going to be a unit when it's done. Yeah. No, it'll be better now. It's no, for sure. And all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't even beat me right now. So that's I will destroy you. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of this guy's hair. Well, you'll obviously have the block here. Um, all my parts are over here on this side. Right now, they are measuring for uh, piston clearance. We're going to go up on the compression on the motor. I was going to keep the original cam it had in it, which was a very small custom grind cam designed to pass smog in California. But I have decided sitting on it that I'm going to get another custom grind cam to match the new higher compression uh, pistons and give me a little bit more power. I'm not looking for a max effort car, but if I can get 600 at the tire with this thing, I would not be mad at it at all. From what we've heard, the cylinders are all good. The only thing that was actually hurt was the main bearings. Um, we obviously had lifter failure and we had some bent valves. So we're correcting all those issues and we're improving. Uh, we found some valves that we didn't like, so we're gonna improve those. We're gonna go with the Johnson tie bar lifters, so we will no longer need the LS7 lifter trays. Um, and those tie bars are designed to give a lot less tolerance than the factory ones and hopefully avoid valve float, which we're theorizing might be the reason why I have lifters broken. I have another theory for it. You guys have heard me rant on it before about poor craftsmanship from the previous shop. But everything's good. Everything looks really good. I won't have this car back for a couple of months. So the next few videos you'll see is me improving the chassis, improving other components in the car while the motor's out and I got more space, uh, putting in a uh, baffle in the dry sump tank, putting in new AMT front engine mounts and diff mounts, uh, repairing some of the wiring on the motor and just getting it ready. So when this thing is done, potentially in December, uh, we can have, have it installed and maybe be back out on track by January, February. More realistically, February, give or take. I'm gonna have to get the motor retuned, re before I go back out on track, but everything's moving along. All the ports, parts are starting to get ordered. We just gotta wait to wrap this thing up and get this thing rebuilt.